Ride share. A lot of us use it, and why wouldn't we? It's incredibly popular and easy to use, especially if you've had too much to drink and can't drive yourself. Good evening, I'm Jennifer Griswold. There are plenty of upsides to ride sharing, but there is a downside. People trust too much. That could spell trouble. 3 News Now investigative reporter Jeff Van Sant hit the streets to see if people here are playing it safe. You know, ride shares are extremely popular, but the problem is that people are a little too trusting when they get into a stranger's car. Downtown Omaha, Saturday night. The Capital District. Yeah! Big crowds mean big money for ride share drivers. I don't think she's in view. I've seen just about everything you can imagine. Oh, that's just her phone. <laughs> in there. Oh my God. For more than two years, Steve, known as the rideshare dude, has picked up close to 11,000 fares. He invited our cameras to get a glimpse into a typical weekend. You never know who's going to get in that seat next to you. Not for entertainment, but to show mistakes riders make all too often. Where are you for Taylor? No. Who are you for? I can't tell you that. You're not for Taylor? No. I let her open the door and she asked if I was here for her. Oh, you're breaking my heart right now. You're doing an orange giant charger for Taylor. No. All I would have had to do is say yes and she would have gotten in my car. She was probably so intoxicated that she couldn't judge the difference between an SUV and a charger. Steve says that's the problem. People aren't paying attention not even questioning before getting into a stranger's car. People tend to trust too much and will just jump in the car thinking, oh, this guy's fine. It can have devastating consequences. In March, 21-year-old Samantha Josephson disappeared in South Carolina after getting into this car. She mistook it for her Uber. The suspect used child locks on the doors so she couldn't escape. Her body was found just a day later. And that brought me to the questions that are asked and what happens with me before people get into my car. Also in March in Maryland, a woman is attacked by a man who claimed to be her rideshare driver. He follows her into her apartment building, attacks her in the elevator, demanding cash. He got into her apartment, stole some stuff and took off. It turns out he wasn't a rideshare driver. With bar closing time looming, Steve's business picks up. There are literally dozens of people standing outside, looking at their phones, uh, trying to figure out if they're going to get a ride. Hi. Hello. This woman grabbed the door handle without asking. She and her friends hopped right in without hesitation. OK, how do you know I'm Steve? What's your name and date of uh, birth? What he asked me. They'll ask things that can get them into a dangerous situation, like, are you Steve? Well, any guy could pull up in a car and say, yeah, I'm Steve, get in. Steve, Steve gets the word out, the do's and don'ts. So what did you check before you got in my car? I checked the color of your vehicle and the make and model of your vehicle. And your name before I got in. Some are vigilant already. Steve wants to educate, remind riders to pay attention, take the time to learn the car, the license plate, and most importantly, the driver. All it takes is one question, what's your name? It's so simple. That's what goes through my mind. There's only one person that's gonna say Steve, and that's me, nobody else. Rideshare companies post safety tips on their websites, but there's really nothing better than to teach people in real time like Steve does. Everyone gets a card. You never know, you might need them one day. Jeff Van Sant, 3 News Now. And later in the show, Jeff will join me and we'll have a conversation about the potential dangers of ride sharing. Right now, we have a poll on our Facebook page asking if you use ride share services. Go there now, share your answers. Jeff and I will look at the results at 630.